Hey, what's up guys? Edao Sines here from The Mimic Method, and this is part four of our five-part video series on the flow blocks, the things that are stopping you from flowing in your target language. Now you'll see I'm in a different setting now. I'm actually just arrived in Ibiza, Spain to attend the wedding of one of our Spanish coaches, our Spanish pronunciation coach, Nuria, and um, so excuse the, the background. But in today's video, we're going to talk about the knowledge experience block. But before we get into it, let's review the past three blocks in the previous videos. First, we had the mind-body block, which is where you get stuck in your head, overthinking, overanalyzing things. We had the ear-mouth block, which is where people speak really fast and you're just not able to process the sounds well enough. And then when you speak, you get tongue-tied, trip over your pronunciation or mispronounce things so bad that people struggle to understand you. Then we had the ego spirit block, which is about a difficulty channeling the spirit of the people you wish to flow with because your foreigner, native first language, ego, linguistic, cultural identity is too strong and you're not allowing yourself to let go and relax and be infiltrated and inhabited and indwelt by this new spirit. So. That's a quick recap of the last three blocks. So moving on now to the knowledge experience block, which is actually better thought of as a knowledge experience gap. And a way to think about it is like this. When you remo remove the first three blocks, you basically revert back to what you were like when you were a child. When you were a child, you were wide open to the world. They I always love looking, like, looking at a two-year-old or three-year-old and they just kind of like stare at you and they're just like, you know the way that like babies stare at you and they're just they're just taking it all in because it's all brand new to them and they're fresh, you know, and they have this instinct of observe everything very closely and imitate. I also love playing with children and making weird sound effects or saying words from different languages and then they will just perfectly mimic me. This perfect melody intonation, not just the pronunciation or anything, but the spirit of it, just a complete reproduction on like their first try. And it's like, wow, this is crazy, right? And that, the way I think about it is that is our fundamental instinct and it doesn't actually go anywhere. What happens is that when we get older, we hit puberty, we become adults, those blocks start to form. And the reason they form is because we are adapting to an environment. We adapt to the sounds, to the movements, to the culture, to our social niche, and we create our ego identity, we create our hearing and pronunciation patterns, we create, we create our movement and all these new thinking patterns, and those things come online. Baby, children don't have that. Children aren't self-conscious. You know, the six-year-old is not self-conscious. They're not like analyzing things in their head. They're just there in the world, which is why if you take a six-year-old and take them from their home country, put them in anywhere on the planet, and just like let them go in the, into the playground and interact with the world for a period of time, they're gonna come back without any teacher, without any instruction. They're gonna come back being able to speak the language. And we want to be able to mimic that organic form of learning through mimicry. But we as adults, we have challenges because, well, first, just practically speaking, we have other stuff we have to attend to in life, whereas children just their only job is to exist and learn. We have to like work and go to school and do other things that are important to us while we're trying to pursue our language learning goals. So that's the first one. Second, the we, we still have these, you know, we can do our training and remove all these blocks, but we still have like a thinking mind. We wanna be efficient, we wanna be systematic with things and you know, we don't have as much patience for that kind of stuff. So ideally what we're looking for is a way that we can mimic the organic learning experience of a child while still having structure and efficiency that will accommodate our needs as, as adults, right? And the problem is all the other methods out there, they don't really help us in this way. They, they actually reinforce these blockages we already discussed. So if you're doing your smartphone app or textbook instruction, your teachers, you know, making you memorize conjugation charts, all you're doing is just reinforcing those blocks. Every time you, you memorize a conjugation chart, you're training your brain to get stuck in your mind and out of the present moment. Every time you learn vocabulary with flashcards and letters, you're training yourself to not actually relate to the word 
as a sound, as a context, and instead it's like a letter on a piece of paper or on a screen, which is a completely different thing, and it will interfere with your ears and your mouth and block your ability to, to hear and pronounce things properly. And finally, that this is the general, the part of this, I just feel like I never effectively communicate how crazy this is to people, but what we're here to do is flow with real human beings and real conversation and therefore you can only truly learn in that environment that's how children learn interacting with human beings in a lively environment and most language learners spend 99 percent of their time not doing that instead they're like this i'm learning a language and so you're not doing anything similar to the thing so you shouldn't expect to make any progress that way but i won't rant on that right now now i want to talk about how can we create that organic but still structured and efficient way of learning. So you're gonna go into our new curriculum. This is the latest major addition to the Mimic Method is this process and this content for helping people learn vocabulary and learn grammar in an organic way. And the first part of it is this thing we call the conversation game. And the idea of the conversation game and there's very different variations of it is that when we're creating it, we're looking for what is the minimal sh kind of conversational context or interaction where you don't need to think about what you're talking about. Like if you're discussing a topic like politics or your, your career or your favorite sport, whatever. Leave all that aside. You're just having an interaction with someone and all the rules are kind of fleshed out. So when you practice enough time, it just kind of comes naturally. And then now you can focus on developing some aspect of your language. That can be your performance, that can be your pronunciation. But what we care about now is developing your vocabulary and developing your grammar. So let's talk first about how we develop our vocabulary within the context of the game. I have other videos you can watch where I break down the game, but a quick recap on it. You got you and your partner, and you have a simple game like this. I eat hamburgers. You eat hamburgers? No, you don't eat hamburgers. You eat pasta. I eat pasta? No, I don't eat pasta. Your girlfriend eats pasta. My girlfriend eats pasta? No, my girlfriend doesn't eat pasta. My dog eats pasta. And you go back and forth kind of arguing um, about nothing, but the idea here is that you are responding and reacting to what the person's giving you, and you're trying to do it in the moment. So you don't know what's coming, but you're reacting to it. And it's by training this stuff in reaction that we're seeding our intuitions and our, with a deeper understanding versus if I sit down and just kind of write down vocab words and just try to memorize them on paper. In context, I'm actually using them. So it's true knowledge. So the first thing for developing vocabulary, quite simply, we have this, you, we train you on using what we call the magic questions, which are, how do you say this? And what does that mean? So if I'm learning English and I say, I don't, my dog doesn't eat pasta. My dog eats, how do you say, and imagine I'm a Spanish native speaker and I'm, I'm talking to my coach. My dog doesn't eat pasta. My dog eats, and I ask, how do you say aguacate? And then he knows it. Aguacate is avocado, 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 avocado. My dog doesn't eat pasta. My dog eats avocados. All right, so what happened there is we have this process with our coaches where you are playing the game and in the context of the game, you kind of spontaneously from yourself think of something you want to say, but you don't know the word for it. So you ask the magic question, how do I say this? So if you're learning Spanish, you'd say, Como se dice avocado? Aguacate, 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 aguacate. Yo no como, agua, uh, yo no como pasta, yo como aguacate. Right? And that's how that works. On the flip side of it, if they, if your coach or your teacher or your partner says something you don't understand, then you ask, que significa? Or what does that mean? Right? Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? If it was French. Right? And you would ask that question, get it, and then repeat it, loop it, work it back into your game. And what's happening here is you're organically generating vocabulary while practicing using those magic questions so that when you're out there in the real world, these are the magic questions. You shouldn't be relying on some dusty textbook to give you vocabulary. You should be relying, relying on your personal, organically derived experience to generate vocabulary because it's more real to you. It's more deeply embedded in what they call your episodic memory, which is your memory of 
you know, scenes and, pers- and perspectives in your life rather than what conventional things train, which is what's called your propositional no semantic memory which is just kind of memorizing facts about things completely different parts of your brain and this is the part we care about so that's the basic idea there for vocab go out there in the world and ask questions but in the context of a simple practice environment where you can be efficient and structured you generate things with your coach for our coaching we have a process where we store those words in a document and then you can bring them back up we can keep kind of I like using the, the metaphor of a garden when it comes to growing your vocabulary. So each the first time you hear it, we plant a seed in the nice soil of the conversation game, and then we keep watering it as much as we can until it sprouts a plant, and it's, now you know it. You don't have to think about it anymore. Now, moving on to grammar. Grammar, again, conventionally is taught to people by having them memorize the grammatical theory we kind of explicate what the pattern of grammar is so for example in spanish you'll say these are the tenses there's present tense past tense these are the moods subjunctive indicative and then for the subject you have first person second person third person singular plural and then you have different types of verbs ar and er stem changing and then you put that all together into this chart and depending on the tense and the subject then then you conjugate by taking the stem, taking this piece off. And the reason I'm kind of blabbering this right now is just kind of show you how much thinking, how much analyzing is occurring in this process. And some people are really good at rapidly running analysis and computation in their head. Um, and those are the minority of people who do okay with the system. But the vast majority of people cannot do that. And therefore, what happens is they get a massive mind-body block. They go, uh, Joe, uh, Joe, uh, como, come, 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 no, no, Joe, como, right? And then not only did you already have a mind-body block to begin with, but now you've severely reinforced it and made it worse. Now we have to do the work of undoing that. So it really does cause a major problem, which is why I strongly advise against doing it. Even if you are one of those people who can process analysis, things like that very quickly, it's still in your better interest to do things the way I'm gonna show you right now, where we don't explicate the pattern, we just present you the pattern in the context of the game, and then have you drill the game step by step so that it becomes in your body Mm -hmm. rather than in the abstract part of your mind. So enough chatting about it, let me just kinda show you. So for example, this is us learning the present tense for a certain category of Spanish verbs, which ended at. And that's as far as you go on kind of explicating what it is. There's different patterns. We're just gonna call this pattern the ad pattern as opposed to the ir pattern or the ir pattern or the other patterns here. These are um, our system for for transcribing sound. We got the ad, ir, we, ye, i, the irregular. So in context, you start to know what that means i'll go to the we and um what we do is we kind of give you four words to start with and we don't show you the spelling of anything at all because that interferes with your hearing and pronunciation you just kind of see okay the word for play sounds like this jugar yo juego tú juegas él juega ella juega nosotros jugamos Ustedes juegan. Ellos juegan. Ellas juegan. All right, and this is typically how things are presented to you in the conventional method. They only give you this part. This is like the chart of the conjugations. But this for us is just to kind of set the scene for you to kind of link the meaning of things together. Now the real training begins here. And actually going to start from the end so you know what we're building up toward. These four words you're now going to hear fully in the context of a... Um, of a argument game. Yo poder. Tú puedes. No, tú no puedes. Tú vuelves. Yo vuelvo. No, yo no vuelvo. Nosotros volvemos. ¿Ustedes vuelven? No, ustedes no vuelven. Ustedes juegan. Nosotros jugamos. 
No, nosotros no jugamos. Ella juega. Ella juega. All right, so you're shadowing that for your practice. This is what you end up with. This is what you would do with your practice partner after you've gone through the rest of these drills. So then what we do here is we build you up. First, we have echo action where you're just, again, we're not explaining the pattern. We're just showing you the pattern by having the I version. The, the first Yo one. puedo. Yo 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 vuelvo. 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 Yo juego. 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 Yo duermo. Yo duermo. Yo duermo. Yo duermo. And you see here, I'm trying to mimic her exactly. This is just me getting it in my muscle memory. I'm just echoing the action. Um, and then now I'm seeing that in the context of a reaction. So that looks like this. Yo puedo. Tú puedes. No, tú no puedes. Yo puedo. Tú puedes. No, tú no puedes. Yo vuelvo. Tú vuelves. No, tú no vuelves. Yo vuelvo. Tú vuelves. No, tú no vuelves. All right. Um, and then it builds its way up where you're testing it, you're drilling it until eventually you're able to do the whole thing. So to summarize here, what we're giving you here, and we do this for every single verb pattern, just so you build yourself up one by one. And people have been really positive feedback on this because you, you need that repetition. This is what I mean by efficiency. A child just goes out there and then hears all these things and over time slowly kind of puts it all together. But we want to be efficient. So we group things together by their patterns. We don't analyze and explain and chart out the patterns for you. We just show you the patterns in the context of you just mimicking, echoing, practicing the reaction to someone, then showing up with your partner and doing that back and forth. And then once you have passed, you pass each level, you know you've passed it when you can echo it properly, when you can react properly, when you can do the whole interaction, then you progress to the next one, then the next one. And then you do this in the context of the game. Then with your partner, you might do a role play scenario and say, okay, great. Now that I have these words and these pattern of words down in the game, let's see if I can role play us hanging out at the beach and like a shark attacks us. And then we're going to kind of go with the flow. But whenever any of these verbs come up, I'm going to try to do the proper conjugation, right? So I won't go too deep into the whole bigger process, but I'm just trying to give you a sense now of how we think about things here at the mimic method. It's all about action. It's all about intuition. It's all about embodying the pattern rather than thinking too much about the pattern. And this will allow us to resolve that knowledge experience block. Once we've taken care of all the other three blocks, I'm able to mimic, I'm able to be there and be caught up in the spirit of the language. Then all I need to do is just accumulate the experience and have the knowledge presented to me in the most efficient manner possible so I can get the job done as quickly as possible and just be out there flowing and having fun with the good people of, for example, Ibiza, where I actually plan to be learning some of the local dialect here, Ibizenco, as it's called. So maybe I'll have a video on that soon. So anyways, hope you guys found that useful. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave a comment here on the YouTube channel and press like. Also, if you want to do this type of training, get access to our new course, be part of our cohort training, or be one of our one-on-one -on -one coaching students, then click the link in the description on October 14th. We will be opening up registration for people and then starting our training on October 21st. All right. Thanks for watching.